I'm trying to catch up with Professor Mark Matson. Mark is a leading expert on the ageing brain. His research suggests that fasting may help delay the onset of diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia and memory loss. Break. Dr Matson is a professor in the Department of Neuroscience at John Hopkins University. He is also the author of over 500 original research articles and the editor of 10 books in the fields of ageing and neurodegenerative diseases. Decades before intermittent fasting became popular, Dr. Matson began studying mouse models to understand how the brain adapts to challenges like fasting and exercise. Now Dr. Matson is also one of the world's top experts on the f effect of intermittent fasting on human health, aging and disease. His work on intermittent fasting has been featured on national media and he has given a TED talk, Why Fasting Bolsters Brain Power. And with that, let me start the interview. Dr. Matson, thank you very much for joining us today and welcome to Modern Health Span. Well, I'm glad to talk to you today, Richard. Okay, thank you. Um, so Dr. Matson, you are a professor at John Hopkins University and uh, the former, the chief of chief of, of the laboratory of neuroscience at the National Institute of Aging, um, and like a pioneer and an authority on intermittent fasting, could you give us some history as to how you got into aging? My uh, my graduate work was in neuroendocrinology, first uh, studying uh, regulation of production of cortisol uh, by ACTH. So the stress hormone. And then uh, my PhD work was studying a neuroendocrine system that controls molting in crabs. Mm. And then I got uh, recruited to do a postdoc by a well-known neuroscientist uh, who happened to be moving from the University of Iowa at the time I was getting my PhD. So I went with him and my postdoc work was developmental neurobiology. We discovered that uh, glutamate, which is the most important neurotransmitter in the brain, it is the excitatory neurotransmitter throughout the brain. Glutamate controls the formation of neural networks during brain development. It sculpts, if you will, the structure of the brain. Mm. And then it turns out Neurons can be killed if they're excited too much by glutamate. So this can occur in severe epileptic seizures, but we think, and my labs provide a lot of evidence for this, this also occurs in age-related neurodegenerative disorders, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Definitely occurs in stroke where uh, blood supply is shut off neurons don't get enough energy while they're still being excited by glutamate. And uh, uh, so that's how I got interested in aging because uh, I got interested in cell death. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, and cell death, so you, you started off in, oh, okay, so neuroscience and then moving into aging for cell death. So how did you start looking at intermittent fasting? Because I, I think like a long time ago, like intermittent fasting was not the way. I mean, it's like, it was, if you stop eating, then you'll, you won't be well. Well, if you stop eating too long for too long a period, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the way we, I got interested in intermittent fasting is aging is the major risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's mm -hmm. disease and stroke. The question then, obvious question is why? What, what's happening during aging that renders nerve cells vulnerable to degeneration in these diseases? Uh, and it had been known that, that daily calorie restriction extends lifespan in rats and mice. And it had also been shown that every other day fasting has an anti-aging effect. Uh, in, in fact, now looking back, and, and so we did a lot of early studies where we found that if we maintain rats or mice on intermittent fasting 
every other day fasting eating uh, pattern, neurons in their brain are more resistant to dysfunction and degeneration in experimental models of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and stroke. And then we moved on to explore the underlying cellular and molecular mechanisms, which are intriguing and a little bit complicated, uh, but essentially uh, intermittent fasting, not right away, it takes several weeks to a month, causes changes in the brain that increase the neurons resistance to stress, various types of stress, metabolic stress, oxidative stress, um, excitatory stress, which I mentioned glutamate and excitotoxicity. Uh, and most recently we found that uh, in, in animals adapted to intermittent fasting, there's increase, relative increase in activity of inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's part of the explanation of why the intermittent fasting uh, prevents neural network hyperexcitability and may in that way protect against, well, it definitely protects against seizures. In fact, ketogenic diets are still used uh, in the clinic for patients with epilepsy that don't respond well to drugs. Fasting will do the same thing as we all know, hope, I expect your viewers know uh, ketone levels will increase during fasting uh, because there's a metabolic switch from glucose stores in the liver to fat and the ketones derived from the fat. And it turns out the ketones themselves, uh, they're not only an energy source for neurons and other cells, but they also have, a, have signaling functions for example, uh, they can enhance GABA, inhibitory neurotransmitter tone. They can also um, increase the production of a protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF, which uh, there's a huge literature on BDNF. Uh, if your viewers are interested, they can go on PubMed, PubMed which is where they should go for authoritative information you know, not some random website or, uh, yeah. right. And um, if you just put in BDNF on PubMed, you'll get actually thousands of articles. It's critical for learning and memory. Its production is stimulated by activity in neural networks, by physical exercise, and by intermittent fasting. And BDNF is associated with uh, resistance of the brain to neurodegenerative disorders. Right. So anyway, that's a, a pretty quick summary of yes. from the brain brain right. standpoint. We've also done quite a bit of work on effects of intermittent fasting on other organ systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, we showed that in rats adapted to intermittent fasting, their resting heart rate and blood pressure go down and because there's a relative increase in activity of the parasympathetic nervous system. So if, if you remember, the parasympathetic nervous system uses a neurotransmitter acetylcholine that slows heart rate, reduces blood pressure. The sympathetic nervous system, which is activated under acute stress, uh, increases heart rate increases blood pressure. Um, what's interesting there is, this is similar to what you see with endurance training, reduction in resting heart rate and blood pressure. And, and that's because there's increased parasympathetic tone. So I had one question that I really want to ask. So mice and rats, um, their meta metabolism is a lot faster than us, right? So a 24 hour or alternative day fast for them is much more than it is for us. 
That's so, true. So how close of a model would that be for humans who are only doing the similar kind of fast rather than like a wheat fast? Uh, yeah, that's that would just be an educated guess. Right. So I th I'd say one day of fasting in a rodent is similar to three, four days fasting. Oh, but on the other hand, you know, it is 24 hours fasting, 24 hours with food. So they're switching back and forth in a 24 hour cycle. Uh, but in, in the animals, ketone levels go up more during that 24 hour period. Uh, those animals use up their liver derived glucose more quickly. So they're in a ketogenic state for a longer time period during that 24 hours than would be a human. I hope that you found the video informative. We will continue posting videos daily on the latest news in anti-aging and extending health span. We will also bring experts from around the world to discuss the latest advances in the longevity field. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.